Welcome back everybody to Zlatan's Fight Picks. Today we will go over the fight card for UFC 295, Prohachka versus Pereira. Um, it's uh, Friday, so let's get started right away and get this video out. We will start off with the early prelims and move up to the main event like we usually do. First fight, Dennis Bazooka versus Jamal Emers. Dennis Bazooka, 5'9", 70 and a half inch reach, 11 wins, 3 losses, 26 years old. Jamal Emers, 5'11", 74 inch reach, 19 wins, 7 losses, 34 years old. Um, Jamal Emers is going to be the bigger guy. He's older. Um, he's 34 years old. He's not past his prime. He's in his prime. Uh, 26 years old for Dennis Bazooka, got a lot of room for improvement. He's young, he's probably learning a lot of stuff. He should improve, I don't think he's that good. I think he's very low level on a lot of stuff. He's pretty good at striking, he's pretty good at grappling. He's got a lot of durability. Um, I don't think he's a really high level fighter. I don't know if he can be. Jamal Emers, he's the kind of guy that shows flashes of greatness. One time you look at him and you think this guy could be a contender. The other times you think, he doesn't belong in the UFC. So, I mean, never that bad, actually. But still, nevertheless, he does make a lot of bad mistakes, especially mental mistakes. You know, he's won, he's lost fights, many fights that he should have probably won and got decisions against him. You know, it could be a judging thing. Maybe they don't like him. Or it could be uh, against Jenkins, for example. He started wrestling in the third round when he should have probably started wrestling earlier because he had the wrestling advantage. Uh, nevertheless, he's kind of uh, always uh, a bridesmaid, never a bride kind of deal, right? So I can't bet on Bazooka. I don't think he's that good. Jamal Emers, I think he's that good, but he's inconsistent. Got to go with Jamal Emers. Got to expect him to maybe pull this one off. Hopefully he's in New York. The judges don't go against him as well because Bazooka is from New York. Nevertheless, Jamal Emers, he's way too talented. He's got to pull this off. I mean, it's it just frustrating to, to bet on this guy because anything that can go wrong does go wrong. Like it's, but, but, but the guy is pretty good, you know, when he puts it together. He's physically very uh, athletic. He's good on the ground. He's good on the feet. He's durable. He's, he's got all the attributes. I mean, you just expect him not to be in the lowest end of this division. You expect him to be at least in the, the mid-tier. Nevertheless, Emmer's going to be the pick. High, reasonable degree of confidence, you know. I mean, he would be a super high degree of confidence if things just weren't working out for him for some strange reason. I can't put my finger on it. But, you know, mid-range confidence for sure, mid to high. Uh, moving on, Joshua Van versus Kevin Boreas. Uh, Joshua Van, 5'5", five 65-inch five, reach, 8 wins, 1 loss, 22 years old. Kevin Boreas, 5'5", five 68-inch five, reach, 9 wins, 1 loss, 25 years old. Joshua Van. First time I saw this guy, I bet against him, um, against uh, Sergas Zamagulas, uh, the guy from uh, Kazakhstan, uh, who was a decent fighter. I thought he was a pretty decent fighter. He always puts up good fights against everybody. Um, so when Joshua Van came in and he beat this guy and he beat him by split decision, which he probably should have won the decision period, he showed great takedown defense, get up game, really sharp striking, He's 22 years old, so when he came in, I wasn't expecting him to be as good as he was. It was hard to gauge because of where he was fighting before. He was fighting a lot of lower-tier fighters, and he really impressed me. Now, Kevin Boreas, I watched his contender series. Now, this guy is a little older. You know how, uh, as, as men, you develop and you get stronger as you go on. So everyone's saying, well, Boreas is further developed physically. Uh, but I watched Boreas fight. He's a good striker. And they keep talking about him winning this fight against that Diaz guy. And the Diaz guy took it on short short, uh, short notice and he gassed out in the second round. So Boreas did win and he got stronger and stronger. But he fought against the grappler and he outstruck the grappler. And the grappler had a hard time taking him to the ground when he got tired. I'm not saying that Boreas is not a great fighter. He is a good fighter. I just don't know if he's going to be able to beat Van. I'm fairly confident even though you know Joshua Van is a decent sized favorite uh, fairly confident Van's going to win this uh, just judging from how Boreas's fight went and the contender series compared to what Van's fight was against Zamagulis um, so yeah Joshua Van's going to be the pick uh, moving on uh, John Castaneda versus 
Kian Yo Kang. Uh, John Castaneda, 5 foot 6, 71 inch reach, 20 wins, 6 losses, 31 years old. Kang Ho Kang, 5 foot 9, 73 inch reach, 19 wins, 9 losses, 36 years old. Kang Ho Kang, 36 years old. He's at the peak. I think he's only going to get slower or worse. He doesn't look that bad. I saw him in the last fight. He looked really good. He doesn't fight a lot. So you don't see a lot of him all the time. He seems to fight once a year on average. But this year he's fighting twice. I thought he looked pretty good. He's got a really good jab. Straight up he's got a really good jab. He's, he's got really good chokes. He's really good on top when he takes you to the ground. If he's on top or he's on your back. He's not as good from the bottom. But nevertheless he's fairly tough. He's fairly durable. Um, just a really sturdy kind of fighter. So uh, never, I don't think he's ever been knocked out. Um, the fights he has lost, he actually lost against specialists, people taking him to the ground, really good grapplers. John Castaneda, I like John Castaneda. I mean, I've seen him really destroy the guys he's supposed to destroy and lose against the guys he's supposed to lose. Uh, good grappler, good striker, fairly well-rounded. Um, it just seems like once he meets that level of competition, he's going to wilt. Um, if he takes him to the ground, can get on top of Kang, you know, Hank, Kang, Kang, let's call him Kang, um, he should be able to win this fight by maybe top control. Uh, I don't know if he can get that far. As far as the striking goes, Castaneda's got good leg kicks, but so does Kang. Kang's got, he's going to be taller, going to have the better reach, and he's got a great job. <clears throat> Castaneda's going to have more power, good kicks to the head. Um, look at, I went back and forth in this fight, thought it was a 50-50. The more I looked at it, the more I think, you know what, I think Kang can do this. I also heard that Castaneda couldn't make weight, questioning his cardio. You know, as the fight goes on, Kang generally does make weight. He's got really good cardio. He is the underdog too, so I'm going to go with Kang to win this end decision. Moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jaron versus, Gordon versus Marco Madsen. Uh, Jared Gordon, 5'9", 68 inch reach, 19 wins, 6 losses, 35 years old. Marco Madsen, 5'8", 72 inch reach, 12 wins, 1 loss, 39 years old. Well, um, Gordon's going to be a little taller. Madsen's got longer arms. They're both getting old. I mean, G Jared Gordon, I would say, argue that he has gotten better and better and better. It's probably the best version right now that we see of Jared Gordon. Not a super strong striker, but a good striker. Uh, not great submissions, but decent on the ground. Uh, Marco Madsen, 39 years old. Hard to tell what we're going to see. I don't think we've seen him in the ring for a while. He's 39 years old. I don't know if he's really serious about this anymore. He's probably ready to retire. Good wrestler. Um, good solid strikes, but slow. So and But somehow effective. They're really weird. It's slow strikes, but effective. Um, very strong. So I went back and forth on this one. You know what? I got to go with the younger guy, the guy who's just getting better, not the guy who's ready to leave the UFC. I don't think he's serious anymore. Um, Gordon's just got to keep it on the feet and outstrike Matson and probably take him into the third round and, you know, win the fight by attrition. I don't think anyone's going to get finished in this fight, but Jared Gordon's going to be the pick. Moving on. Nazim Sadikov versus Vyacheslav Borshchev. Uh, Nazim Sadikov, 5'10", 69 inch reach, 9 wins, 1 loss, 29 years old. Vyacheslav Borshchev, 5'11", 69 inch reach, 7 wins, 3 losses, 31 years old. Almost the same age, almost the same size. Um, Sadikov, I bet against him against McKinney and he ended up winning by submission. I just, I wasn't sure if he was like a grappler or if he's a striker. Now, I always thought he was more of a striker, but he showed some grappling and everyone talking about this is, you know, from the grapevine is saying Sadikov's going to wrestle. Apparently he's got this wrestling. He is at a, at a training camp or a training gym that has a lot of wrestlers. Vyacheslav Borchev, excellent striker, good boxer. He's the boxing or striking coach over at uh, Alpha Male. So his number one Achilles heel has been takedowns. Is if you can take this guy down, you can grind out a victory. It doesn't mean he's easy to take down. It doesn't mean he doesn't get back up. But if you keep doing it, you could win a grind out a victory. So the plan to, to beat this guy is already there. If you're going to stand there and strike with him, you're probably going to get knocked out. He's very durable, very great with striking, good counter striking, good everything. Sadikov. 
he's got to basically be a wrestler. Now, is he a wrestler? I don't know. You know, I mean, when I first picked this, I thought it was a, excuse me, it's got a scratch his eye. Uh, I picked him easily and figuring, you know what, no problem. He can just wrestle this guy. But the more I look into it, the more I realize Sadikov, well, is he a wrestler? Is he training to be a wrestler? Has, I mean, we've seen him choke out McKinney. Uh, we've seen him take down Elder once. We also get hit, oh, you know, get hurt by Elder, but uh, through striking. Um, so hard to tell what he's going to do. I mean, if everyone's expecting him to wrestle, he's a wrestle heavy gym. Saw him choke out McKinney. I'm assuming that's going to be his game plan. If that's going to be his game plan, he can grind out a decision. If it's not going to be his game plan, Borshev can knock this guy out. So, I mean, you could have a high degree of confidence if we saw more wrestling. So I don't have a high degree of confidence in this fight. But I'm going to go with Sedikov, figuring that the gym he's training at is a very good gym. And they got great game plans. So I'm it's the Luongo. Um, what's that? And the other wrestler guy. Uh, Luongo Jim or whatever. Um, so I'm going to go with Sadikov. I mean, it's the coin flip. Depending on the game plan. And, you know, how much better did Borchev get against takedowns? I don't know. But Sadikov's going to be the pick. I picked against them. You know, and he won. Actually, I picked against him twice, and he won. <laughs> um, so it's going to be in New York. He's from New York. So let's go with Sadikov. Very low confidence. Don't know what we're going to get. Nevertheless, moving on. Mateus Rebeski versus Roosevelt Roberts. Uh, this switched. I mean, Roosevelt Roberts is a last-minute substitution for Rebeski, so he can have this fight. He was going to fight Aliyev. I was going to pick Rebeski. He's fighting Roosevelt. I'm still picking Rebeski. Um, not to get ahead of ourselves, but Rebeski, 5'7", 66-inch reach, 18 wins, 1 loss, 31 years old. Roosevelt Roberts, 6'2", 73-inch reach, 12 wins, 4 losses, 29 years old. About the same age. I mean, huge 7-inch height difference. You know, 7-inch reach difference. Realistically, you know, you want to go with the bigger fighter, um, but Roosevelt Roberts has, has shown that he can be taken down and can be controlled on the ground. He's great when he's standing. He's got long limbs. He's good strikes. But Rubeski has shown that he's very durable. He can get in on people. He's a great wrestler and good top control. I mean, it's, he's at a minus 800. It's ridiculous. You can't even bet it. But, I mean, it's a last-minute fight for Roosevelt. I think he's having a hard time making weight as well. Rubeski's going to be the pick. He should win this, apart from some lucky shot or lucky knee that's what that catches him when he's coming in and even then he still might survive because this guy's really tough and if he does survive then he could just continue and win the decision anyway so Robeski's going to be the pick I wouldn't bet on it but there you go <laughs> um high degree of confidence though so moving on Steve Urseg versus Alessandro Costa so Steve Urseg 5 foot 8 68 inch reach 10 wins one loss 28 years old, Alessandro Costa, 5'4", 67 inch reach, 13 wins, 3 losses, 27 years old. Same age, Ursig's going to be the taller fighter, got a little bit of a reach. Steve Ursig, I bet against him when he first came out, when he fought, um, what's the the Undertaker, what's his name? Um, oh, what is it? can't remember that guy he fought. But anyways, he was ranked like number 10, and Ursig came and just handled him decisively. And he totally ruined my parlay because I had bet the other guy and he was in a lot of parlays and that was the one fight that was wrong. And Ursig dismantled this guy because I've seen Ursig and he's good uh, in the regional scene. He was very talented, but it was hard to tell how talented he was until he fought a higher level of competition. He came in, he's, yeah, I, I think he was a short notice as well. He's very competent on the feet, competent on the ground, good durability, tough guy, really impressed with him. Uh, Alexander Costa. Very good on the contender series. He got he had to fight um, what's that Albazi, which was you know a contender. He got destroyed by Albazi. Controlled. I mean he did as good as he can do do against Albazi, but he is a very talented, very stout, very powerful, very good striker, decent on the ground. He's well rounded, but I just can't bet against Ursaig. I think I, I saw something in him that 
you know, the guy is probably at least mid to upper mid tier. He's going to do well in this division. Costa, I don't know. Uh, he's going to be talented. He's going to be somebody. He's going to be in the mid tier range, maybe lower mid tier. So looking at it from an all around perspective, I mean, he beat Jimmy Flick, which doesn't mean anything. So you really still haven't seen really what he can do, I guess, because he fought somebody really, really exceptional and somebody really, really bad. So we don't know where his level's at. But I got to go Steve Versick from what I saw from him. I think he's going to be just better all around fighter. He's going to have the reach. He's going to have the height. Those are the things you like to see right off the bat. Uh, Steve Versick's going to be the pick. Fair degree, fair high degree of confidence. Uh, Tabitha Ricci versus Lupe Godinez. Tabitha Ricci, 5'1", 61 inch reach, 9 wins, 1 loss, 28 years old. Lupe Godinez, 5'2", 61 inch reach, 11 wins, 3 losses, 30 years old. Age about the same. Ability, I mean, they both got better. Tabitha Ricci is a girl that I bet against every single time and I've lost every single time. <laughs> because she's 5'1", one. I've always think she's going to have a problem with her reach. But she's fast. She's quick. She's got great foot movement. She's a little rigid with her striking, but she's fast. And she can take people down. And she's got a high um, fight IQ where she goes in and she beats people with within the parameters of what she can beat them in. Like certain ones she can outstrike, certain ones she can take down and ground and pound, certain ones she could choke out, certain ones she could take down and let back up and just basically outpoint them by taking them down. Very smart IQ. Um, I was looking for reasons to bet her because I think she's going to be the little bit faster fighter. But um, not to get ahead of myself, but Lupe Godinez, you know, she's always suffering from low fight IQ. It's like, well, she's a wrestler. She always wants to strike. And we're like, every fight, she's fighting the striker. We said, hey, would you wrestle? And she always seems like she's not wrestling. But she has improved the striking. She's very tough, very durable, very powerful. Right on the first bat, when I looked at it, I said, okay, Godinez, she's going to be too powerful. But then after looking at the tape, Ricci, I'm there like, okay, is she even going to get a hold of Ricci? Because Ricci is going to be skirting on the outside. Codina is going to be trying putting in pressure. Is Ricci going to be able to be coming in, striking and leaving, right? And maybe coming in, going for a takedown, putting Godina on her back and then getting back up and just basically outpointing her in three rounds. I think she's going to have a hard time taking down Godinez because I think she's going to have pretty good takedown defense. And I think when Ricci does come in, Godina is going to have good enough counters to maybe land before Ricci leaves the the, the pocket. Um, and they're about the same size. So there's, there's going to be, it's going to be a speed on speed. It's not going to be a lot of reach, you know. So I'm going to go with who I think is a little more powerful. It could, it looks like it's Godinez, even though Ricci is, you know, more powerful than she looks. I think Godinez is still going to be more powerful. It's going to be a really close fight. I went back and forth. I went Godinez. I thought maybe Ricci, but I'm going to go back to Godinez. I think Rodina is going to win this decision. It's going to be a close fight. Plus, looking at the level of competition, I think Godinez has fought the better level of competition as well. Surprisingly, because Ricci's ranked higher. Godinez is going to be the pick. Very mid tier confidence. Moving on to the main card. <clears throat> It's going well. It's going fast. Uh, Diego Lopez versus Pat Sabatini. Diego Lopez, 5'11", 72 and a half inch reach, 22 wins, 6 losses, 28 years old. Pat Sabatini, 5'8", 70 inch reach, 18 wins, 4 losses, 32 years old. Both of them are coming into their prime. Pat Sabatini is definitely in his prime. Not going to see very much difference in him. Diego Lopez has been building and getting better. He's 28 years old. I don't know if he's peaked. I think that he's getting better still especially watching some older fights. Uh, right off the bat, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, Lopez. But then I started looking into it. The more I looked into it, the more I'm like, man, you know, Pat Sabatini could win this because Pat Sabatini has a style, of a wrestling style. He's got okay striking, but he wants basically to take you down and he's good, good, good trip takedowns, not just blast doubles, good trip takedowns. And when he gets on you, he's very heavy and he's on top of you and he's just winning rounds by punching you and punching you and maybe he'll get a submission if you give it to him, otherwise he's just happy wet blanketing you through the whole rounds. So he's got a style that'll beat a lot of guys. 
except for really good strikers. And even then, the strikers have got to be careful because, I mean, really good strikers have lost against him who cannot stop the takedowns. He's got a very tricky style. He's got the worst style. I don't like his style. It's very boring. I'm always hoping that he loses because having guys like this makes the sport suck. Okay, I don't even like watching it. So when I saw him get um, knocked out by um, D Damian Jackson, Damian Jackson, I uh, actually have been on Damian Jackson because I thought he, he's good on the ground and he's a good striker. Sure enough, he knocked him out right off the bat. And that's what you got to do with this guy. You got to finish Sabatini because he's a hard guy to win against because of his style. Because it's boring. He's on top of you. He's lying on top of you, not doing anything. Just you know, winning the rounds by control, right? And he's got he's got it down to a science. But it sucks to to watch that. Diego Lopez, he's a ground guy, but he's very exciting. He's always trying to finish the fight. He's always trying to finish the fight. On his back, he's exciting. On his feet, he's exciting. Kind of guy you want to win. So maybe I'm a little biased in this. But Diego Lopez has got to submit Pat Sabatini, has got to finish Pat Sabatini, or outstrike him and try to stay on the feet. Diego Lopez, I don't think, has a great takedown defense because I don't think he cares to get taken down which can play into Pat Sabatini's wheelhouse, where <coughs> uh, Sabatini takes Lopez down, Lopez trying for submissions, he's not getting him, Pat Sabatini wins the rounds. Picked Lopez, he's going to go to Sabatini, but the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, you know what, I can't pad on Pat Sabatini. You know, Diego Lopez fought Brito, and he lost, and he's, Brito was very powerful, very strong on top. Pat Sabatini is very similar, but he's not Brito. I think that I've also seen Pat Sabatini get his arm broken. Um, there was a, a, a KO uh, or what, what do they call it? Some uh, medical stoppage, doctor stoppage. And that was basically Pat Sabatini uh, getting his arm snapped by another grappler. So that's what I'm thinking. This has got to happen is Lopez is going to grab an arm and snap his arm. <laughs> that's how that's how it's got to play out. So if you're going to play Diego Lopez, play him to finish the fight. You know, um, I don't know if he's going to finish it on the ground. If, if I did stay on the feet, Lopez is still the better striker. As a matter of fact, if he could stay on the feet and not get taken down, I think he can outstrike Sabatini. So he does have a couple of paths to victory, but Sabatini's got one path to victory. He's got to take you down and wet blanket you for three rounds, which is the absolute worst. So he's going to be the favorite. I, well, he's a Philadelphia guy. Um, so he's not going to be in New York, but he's a Northeast kind of guy. I'm going to go with Diego Lopez. I want him to win. You know, take it for what it's worth. Low level of confidence. I want this guy to win. I don't want to see Pat Sabatini win and watch another boring wet blanket fight from Pat Sabatini. You know, where he's got a guy up against the fence trying to leg trip him. It's just, uh, just so boring. Pat Lopez is going to be the pick. Hopefully he knocks him out or breaks his arm, and then we move on, right? <laughs> Pat Sabatini, we don't have to keep looking at Pat Sabatini with blanket people. Um, moving on. and not, not that I hate, I don't want to hate too much on this guy. I don't want to have his arm broken. And the reason why I'm saying I hope he gets his arm broken is not because I want him to get his arm broken. I hope he actually quits and taps out. But... If you ever watch Pat Sabatini, and this is not a knock on Pat Sabatini, is to his credit, is the last time he got uh, the doctor stoppage is he had his arm broken, flopping around, and he wanted to continue to fight. He didn't want to stop the fight. He never tapped. So I'm not saying this in a derogatory way to Sabatini, to his, I'm just saying it, he's such a tough guy that you literally have to break his arm. He's not going to tap. So I'm not saying that in a bad way. I just think that's the way that Lopez has to win this fight is through Dr. Stoppage like the last time. So I don't want to make it seem like, oh, I hope, I, I hope nobody gets their arm broken. Seriously, like I don't want to see that for anyone. So what I'm saying that is, is relating to the fact that Sabatini won't tap until you actually break it. That's what happened last time. All right, so just, you know, you know I feel bad. I feel like, oh man, that's, that's the kind of talk I don't want to hear. Uh, moving on, Matt Frivola versus Benoit Saint Denis. Matt Frivola, five foot nine, seventy-one inch reach, eleven wins, three losses, one draw. Thirty-three years old. Benoit Saint Denis, five foot eleven, seventy-three inch reach, twelve wins, one loss, twenty-seven years old. Frivola is at the peak. Uh, he did get better and better. 
Um, he's probably peaking right now. Uh, I'm surprised how young Benoit Saint Denis is. He's 27 years old. He's only getting better. I've seen him get better. Um, I don't think I actually bet. I've ever, I think I bet on him in the last fight, but the fight before I never bet on him, or the fight before I bet on him. I can't remember one of them. I, I don't bet a lot on him. Let's put it that way. He's been continually impressing me. He's going to be the bigger fighter here. I don't think he's going to be the more powerful striker. I think Frivola, Scott KO power. I bet against him against um, Drew Dober. I can't believe he knocked out Judober. I was saying that Judober's chin is going to go at some point. He's taken a lot of punishment. I didn't think it was going to be Frivola to do it. I thought he was going to knock out Frivola. I've seen Frivola get KO'd. And as much as I've seen Frivola have power, I, you know what? I mean, it just seems like he's getting more powerful. He's good in the pocket. Just an animal. Like, just steamroller is as good. Is a good nickname for this guy. Um, he's good on the ground. He's a good wrestler. I mean, he's well-rounded. This is going to be a close fight. When I first saw this fight, I immediately picked St. Denis, high level of confidence. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized Matt Favola's got a legit shot at this. Benoit St. Denis has never been knocked out. He is hittable. He's good on the ground. I mean, you don't want to be hittable against Favola. And you got to be careful on the ground. I think he could still beat Favola on the ground and choke him out and out-grapple him. Favola does have a good get-up game. It's very tough to hold down. It's going to be a competitive match, and Frivola has multiple ways to win. A lot of people are picking Frivola. I was almost flipped over. I went from there. I went from Saint Denis to Frivola, but I just can't get myself to pick Frivola. I think Saint Denis is getting better. I think his leg kicks and his body kicks were phenomenal. He very much reminds me of uh, Martinez who I bet against Yanez, but he just destroyed Yanez with leg kicks. Benoit St. Denis got fantastic leg kicks. That's where the clear advantage is, is the kicking game. And Benoit St. Denis is going to have an advantage in the kicking game. That can definitely pay dividends for him. Just got to be careful with, when he's in the pocket with Frivola because he's got a lot of power. Frivola is a New York guy. You know, I mean, do you want to bet against him? I just think Benoit Saint Denis has been improving, and I think after this fight, we'll see him like looked at differently, like definitely a contender, kind of top ten type of guy. Gonna go with Saint Denis. Not super high level of confidence, just because Frivola is more talented than people are giving him credit for, and he's very dangerous. But Saint Denis is gonna be the pick. Um, moving on, Jessica Andrade versus Mackenzie Dern. Jessica Andrade, five foot one, sixty-two inch reach, twelve wins, twelve losses, thirty-two years old. Mackenzie Dern, five foot four, sixty-three inch reach, thirteen wins, three losses, thirty years old. Both about the same age. Jessica Andrade's got a lot of mileage on her. It seems like she's slowing down, and all the attributes she brought into the fight game, it seems like she has stayed the same, and all the girls have taken it to the next level. I've been on Jessica Andrade for the last three fights, and the last three fights I've lost money with Jessica Andrade. I don't want to bet her again. <laughs> so I've always considered her too small, but with her power and with the way she fights, she's always managed to work around it and, you know, played on her attributes and worked around her, you know, detriments. I saw Mackenzie Dern really improve her striking against Hill. Hill's not the top 10. Hill's not, I don't know if she's top 15, but Hill is very talented. And Dern dominated her on the feet took her to the ground and no matter what Hill did who's actually pretty he's getting pretty good on the ground uh Dern managed to control her really well just Gandraj pretty good on the ground really good striker just she doesn't seem like the same Jessica Gandraj I think everyone's stepped up their game I think this is going to be a decision I think Mackenzie Dern might have a hard time taking her down she might take her down once I think she's going to have a hard time taking her down it's going to be a striking match I think Jessica Dern has improved the striking enough to outstrike Jessica Andrade, and she just got to stay away from that power shot. So, nevertheless, she's going to be taller. I think she's the up and comer. I think they're on different trajectories. I got to go with Dern on this mid level confidence. Dern's going to be the pick. I think you're going to see the changing of the guard here. Um, 
Moving on, Sergei Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall. Sergei Pavlovich, six foot three, eight and three inch reach, eighteen wins, one loss, thirty one years old. Tom Aspinall, six foot five, seventy eight inch reach, thirteen wins, three losses, thirty years old. Same age. These guys are peaking. If you told me to pick this fight, <clears throat> excuse me, right after the Volkov fight, I would say what when Aspinall beat Volkov and how he beat Volkov, I thought this guy's going to be the next champ. He's going to beat everyone because if he's that big and that good on the ground, he's got that much movement and he's a good striker and he can submit Volkov, this this guy is virtually unstoppable. So I would have picked Aspinall. But Pavlovich coming up and then watching his last few fights and watching, knowing that he's a striker and he's a knockout guy, and thinking that at some point somebody's going to be able to stop this guy through another some other means how he goes into these fights and imposes his will it's next level like he goes in there and he's going to knock you out and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it basically like he's just going to impose his will and how he did it on <coughs> many fighters not that tom aspinall doesn't do it tom aspinall he is a little more slick on the feet. You know, he's got good movement, goes in and out. I mean, the guy's good. I just think at this point that uh, Sergei Pavlovich is, is on a tear. And it's all about... How can I put it? Um, it's all about being at the peak at this fight, uh, at this fight game at the time for the for these belts is when you're at your peak performance or peak trend or you know just you know how the pendulum swings at some point you know if doesn't matter how how, how good you are if all the stars are aligning that uh, you know Aspinall might be able to beat him at another time or Maspinal could have beat him a year ago. But just seeing Pavlovich, Pavlovich's pendulum swinging, it just doesn't seem like it's going to stop. It just looks like he's at the point where he's going to carry this thing through, where this fight happened right at the right time, where he's at his peak mentally, physically, confidence-wise. That's what I'm seeing. Otherwise, I'd pick Aspinall because Aspinall has got good movement on the feet. He finishes his fight. They're both finishers. I mean, they both finish everything in the, in the first round virtually, right? Aspinall has got the ground game. I just don't think it's going to get to the ground. I think this is going to be a first round knockout. And I think Pavlovich, you know, I just don't think he sees any other, any other picture in his head. You know, just like his sheer will is going to win this fight. That's that's just my take on this. I could be very well wrong because, like I said, if if you ask me right after the Volkov fight, I would tell you that Aspinall is going to be is the future champ. He's he's the future of that division. He's going to win that fight. And as things have gone up and down for Aspinall, Pavlovich, his pendulum has been in full swing and picking up speed, and that pendulum slash call it a wrecking ball is about to clash with Tom Aspinall's wrecking ball but Tom Aspinall's wrecking ball has no momentum not like Pavlovich's and I think it's the momentum that's going to carry him through this fight if that makes any sense <clears throat> otherwise Aspinall is definitely you know if you had asked me before he was going to win it I think at this point at this point in time Pavlovich is going to win and he's the underdog so I'm going to go with that you know, am I a high degree of confidence? No, it's very low degree of confidence because this is virtually a coin flip. Somebody's going to get KO'd in the first round. Uh, moving on. Yuri Prohachka versus Alex Pereira. Yuri Prohachka, six foot three, eighty inch reach, twenty nine wins, three losses, one draw, thirty one years old. Alex Pereira, six foot four, seventy nine inch reach, eight wins, two losses, thirty six years old. I bet. Glover against Yuri Prohachka and I had a huge parlay <laughs> and 
Glover won the first three rounds, or at least three, he won three of the rounds. And the fifth round, he was, you know, it didn't matter. He was winning actually the fifth round. And then Prochka reversed the position. I thought, who cares? He's going to win that round. It won't matter. It's at least three rounds to two, maybe four rounds to two. Glover parlays in the bag. Prochka finds it. Just sheer determination and chokes out Glover, like submits him. My parlay goes out the window. <laughs> but I was upset, but I couldn't believe how he found the energy and the willpower to end and just to be aware of the situation to finish Glover instead of just pounding him or hitting him for the rest of the round. Like he knew he had to win and he found a way to win. I couldn't believe that. It was amazing. Amazing to watch, even though it cost me a lot of money. Literally, that was the last fight of the parlay, the final event. And that was when I was betting one guy. Now I'm always betting the final event two ways, just because of all my experiences with those final events. So having said that, I've actually bet this fight both ways, but the bigger bet is on Yuri. Um, and the reason why is because he does get hit a lot. He's very unorthodox. He can get taken down, but he finds a way to win. And he's very dynamic. He's very, um, he's just very physical and just nimble on his feet. And here's the thing is Alex Pereira is going to be the more technical striker. He's the guy can take a punch. The guy is a super strong left hook. He's got very strong punches. He can knock anyone out. My issue is this. Pereira is 36 years old. Pereira got a really bad knockout. Happened to him from Adesanya. And you've never seen him get KO'd quite like that ever before. At 36 years old, I don't know if that is that um, that affected his chin. And I think it did. I don't think he could take a shot as well as he did before that knockout. And at 36 years old, I think we're gonna see it now with our Yuri Prochka fight. Yuri Prochka, 31 years old, he has been hurt before, but he seems to bounce back. I don't think he's at that damaged state yet. And I think he's gonna knock out Pereira. You know, um, even though he's not the better technical striker, he has very, um, what's, the, what's the word? They're very effective. His style is very effective for for winning by KO because it just his strikes are coming in from all angles. Will Pereira get the get the shot and maybe knock him out? Maybe Pereira is the favorite, uh, or will Prochka survive? You know, um, Prochka could even take it to the ground. I mean, the guy submitted Glover. You know, who's teaching? who's, who's uh, mentoring Pereira. So you think he's going to be able to teach him. I mean, the fact is, it doesn't matter how much you teach him. When you go in, it's only you two guys in the cage. Almost the same size, almost the same reach. I just think Yuri's going to be more durable. And I think he's going to find a way to win. And I'm going to pick Yuri on this one. He is the, again, he's the underdog. But just going from, a, from my gut feeling of how much punishment Pereira can take, and how he looked against Jan Blachowicz. Blachowicz? Jan Jachowicz, whatever his name is, yeah. And he came with a split decision uh, type of victory over him. I didn't like that look, even though Jan was taking him to the ground. Yeah, you know, he couldn't knock Jan out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Prochka. I think Pereira, we're gonna see a problem with his chin. And I think we haven't seen it. I think it's it's there though. So let's go look at the board. Hopefully everyone sees it. Let's see, I see. I can see. Try put it closer. The glare is any different? Sure, let's do this. All right, most confident pick going to be Rebeski minus eight hundred. Don't bother betting it. <laughs> One thing I learned is 
I've actually had quite a few parlays where I keep telling one, don't bet it. <laughs> and I do. And it's always this guy here that tends to lose quite often, actually. So I'm going to take my own advice. I'm talking to myself. Don't bet this one. <laughs> um, but before I